Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you're trying to build an online business or you want to set up a nice little space to show off your creative skills with the portfolio, or even if you wanted to just put together a creative gift, there are so many ways to take advantage of a web page. And Squarespace makes it as easy as possible. They have a huge variety of templates, fonts, color palettes, everything you need to show off your unique style without it being overwhelming. And it doesn't just stop at looks. You can take advantage of of their behind the scenes analytics to see where your customers or viewers are coming from. They can pull all your social media accounts into one hub and help send out any messages or advertisements or whatever you have from one convenient spot and give you any notification from any of those websites there as well. Everything you need to build a proper marketing strategy to help you grow as a creator or as a business or really whatever you want. It's never been this easy to mark your place in the digital frontier. Go take a look for yourself. I've only mentioned a handful of features they offer. You can get a free trial going over at squarespace.com, and if you want to take the plunge, head over to squarespace.com slash gameapologist and get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, and let's get back to it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's finally happened. I have been acknowledged as a content creator by Mr. Sega himself. They've given me a review copy of the latest Sonic game so I could really dig in and give you a thorough analysis and viewpoint to better help you decide if this is a smart purchase or something to skip. I should note that even though I've been given a review copy, it will not change my opinion on the game. That critique is mine and mine alone. That said, I do appreciate Mr. Sega considering me to be one of the first to review the long-awaited Tales Sky Patrol. Wait, who sent this email? Hello there, I'm Nick, and this is The Game Apologist, where we look for the good in bad games. And I'm not bitter whatsoever. No, I don't stir up drama. I haven't committed any crimes that you can prove. And sure, I didn't start off purely as a Sonic channel, but I have given so much of my time and life to this stupid hedgehog. You think I might be able to catch a break and be able to check out Sonic Frontiers the same time as everyone else, but nope. Not old Nick, but it's fine. I'm an adult. I'm mature. I'm so happy for everyone else on the planet playing their brand spanking new Sonic game and then spoiling everything in YouTube videos. Oh man, my favorite part of the game for sure is when Sally Acorn came back. S Sally's never coming back. So instead of Sonic Frontiers, we're instead going to focus on the Hedgehog's two-tailed sidekick, as it happens to be his 30th anniversary this month. And back in the day, he actually got his own spin-off game. Two of them, in fact. That's uh, one more than Knuckles or Shadow ever got. And one of them wasn't even released here in the States. What were you hiding from us, Japan? What were you so ashamed of? Let's find out, because today we're looking at Tails Sky Patrol. Where you play uh, Tails. He flies constantly. Where was that stamina in the main series, buddy? He also constantly carries around a ring, even though it acts as a weapon, as opposed to the standard health and collectible combo from the main Sonic series. Wonder if this served as inspiration for that genius fake ring bomb in 06. Apparently it's known as the Boomer Ring. No, not that kind of boomer or that. Shut up. To play on the word boomerang. It's clever, I suppose. I, I get it. And this isn't a platformer. This is more like a horizontal shoot 'em up Kinda, I guess. I'm not even confident to say that's what this is in terms of a genre. I've never actually played a game quite like what we have here. You guide Tails through auto-scrolling levels, using different gimmicks to help guide his movement, solve puzzles, avoid traps, grab collectibles, the works. All while chasing down a witch who is turning people into crystals. Would you be surprised to learn that this didn't start off as a Sonic game? We'll get to that. Whatever this game was originally meant to be, we now have Tails in his very own game, and again, a very unique one at that. And by unique, I'm mostly mean bad, or at least that's how I felt about this game for decades. But now... Still not great, but there's something here. Since we didn't get it here in America, I first played it where many of us Americans probably first played it, on the GameCube port of Sonic Adventure. Okay, sure, they might have ruined Sonic Adventure with this port, but hey, at least they finally gave us this. 
What a trade-off. And like most other players, I've probably given this a grand total of five minutes before giving up on it entirely. Just didn't leave a great first impression. Going in blind without understanding any of the mechanics is going to get you killed real quick and leave you very little incentive to keep on trying. It kicks you off in what they call a training area, even though it doesn't teach you anything at all. Yeah, make no mistake. Sure, it's called a training area, but this is level one. Yeah, you don't have a boss fight at the end, and sure, it's a little shorter than the rest of the game, but this thing like a half hour at the most. It's level one. I don't care what anyone says. How many other training areas and games do you find yourself getting a game over? And you probably will if you don't know what's going on here. I wasn't sure how to control this stupid ring. I don't even know how Tails interacts with these items. You just fly through this? I sometimes grab stuff, sometimes I don't. And I don't actually know how to interact with the gimmicks. Do I need to touch it with Tails or the ring or something? And sometimes it's hard to tell what's in the background and what's an obstacle. And what's actually safe to touch because the environment just kills you. This idiot fox finally figured out how to fly for a consistent period of time, yet forgot how walking works. He touches grass and dies, as I'm sure most of you would. <laughs> Thanks for watching the video. You're going to die a few times just figuring things out. But truth be told, the worst a game over is going to get you is just kicking you back to the start of a level. And again, you could beat this game in under half an hour, even if you don't know what you're doing. If you are a little patient and move past the initial frustration, you'll soon learn the controls, objectives, and what all these items do. It's fairly self-explanatory with just a little hands-on time. As I said, Tails is always in flight, and you got to keep track of that meter up in the top left corner. That lets you know how much flight power you have left. If that drops, so does Tails. You can replenish this bar by collecting mint candies. And yes, I know Tails loves mint. I don't know why Sonic Media has been hyper-focusing on the favorite foods of these characters as of late. The grapes are delicious. This, as well as any other item, does come at a risk as they don't float in midair. Most items sit on the ground, which again will kill you, so you have to play it safe. To a degree, at any rate, if you go too slow for too long, that flight meter is going to drop to zero. You can move a little bit quicker just by pressing forward on the D-pad, but that too has its own risk as you're likely going to run into something if you don't know where you're going. As for the other power-ups, you also have 1-ups, a shield that will temporarily keep you safe from collisions, and these not Chaos Emeralds that just give you points, but enough points nets you an extra life, so that's nice. And speaking of collision, that collision detection is a little touch and go. Tails can be a little bit flaky when it comes to picking things up, or any one of the many gimmicks in the game. which include things like this balloon, which help you ascend faster, and weights that help you sink faster. You'll have to time when it's safe to let go because these sometimes will lead to your death. This goes for any object that forces you to move. You are going to need to take advantage of these on occasion as the level design sometimes just turns things into a steep hallway, and you won't have enough time to descend or ascend or just move out of the way without a little extra help. You can also get tails to pole dance. No, I'm not talking about commissions to desperate artists. I'm talking about these poles. Rubbing up against one will send the fox flying in whatever direction is indicated. These often lead to rewards like extra mints or one-ups, stuff of that nature. Sometimes they just get in the way. You also have switches here, which I didn't know what they did for the longest time until I did click one and then ran into a blue wall, so I guess they just clear the way for you. Outside of all the gimmicks that can send you in different directions, you do have plenty of obstacles like spikes, these weird yellow rotating things, which I've heard more than one person get frustrated with, and truth be told, I did too, but eventually learned to treat them like actual 3D rotating objects and rush on through while they're flat, they're not too hard to avoid as long as you move quickly. The obstacles I had the most trouble with were these stupid bubble things that just form out of nowhere. You can destroy them, but if you don't have their pattern down, they're likely going to kill you a few times. And weirdly, it was the obstacles I had the most trouble with, even though there are plenty of enemies, as they don't actually kill you. They do shoot projectiles at you, which can mess you up, and if you don't react in time, yeah, you drop from the sky and die. And I certainly did that a few times before I realized that you actually have to be proactive. As long as you mash some buttons, you should recover as long as you still have some flight energy. Some of the enemies include these turtle bots. Not sure why they're here, because that's clearly a bad nick from Sonic 2. And since Eggman isn't in this game, there's no reason for bad nicks to be here, especially when they're working alongside spooky, scary skeletons in the cannons from Mario 3. Sure, fine, whatever. That's not to say these enemies are without their challenge. They just don't technically kill you. They just send you towards your actual enemy. 
the ground. Before I knew what I was doing, I did think the onslaught of enemies were a little unfair, especially since I didn't know exactly how to use the boomerang. But once I got it down, I actually had a bit of fun chucking this thing at enemies. What's even nicer, you can actually take out their projectiles with a well-timed shot. With a little practice, I gotta admit, this difficulty is much more balanced than I initially realized. You have infinite continues, game is super short, and outside of that hit detection and some unfair level design, it's actually not too bad. The real problem with this game is, unsurprisingly, screen crunch. So many challenges require you to make split-second decisions, what path to take, or finding the origin to a string of ring obstacles, ward off oncoming enemies that you just can't see, or get launched at high speeds by some stupid gimmick, and be sure you don't fly face first into a wall that, again, you can't see. You just don't have the real estate to properly react to any of this. And yeah, this is a common complaint for Sonic games of the day, especially the ones on Game Gear, but it's so much worse when the entire environment leads to an insta-kill and the game is an auto-scroller. I understand how frustrating it is to roll through Sonic without being able to see what's ahead, but the ring system at least makes most scenarios far more forgiving. That's just not the case here. Like I said up front, even that first level that they had the gall to call a training area is very likely to wipe out first-time players. I'd imagine even going in with all of this knowledge, this game is gonna kick you around a few times. Even knowing all the controls and what this game's all about, you still have to navigate those tight corridors without knowing what's ahead, avoid enemy bombardments, figuring out whatever the hell's right in front of you, all while managing that flight meter. Gotta say, I didn't expect one of the hardest Sonic games to be a cute little Tails game. All that said, again, when you have unlimited continues, and even the longer levels only last a handful of minutes, long plays of this game on YouTube last around 15 minutes, even going in totally fresh and unfamiliar, you'll probably have this entire game figured out and completed within half an hour. Yeah, it can be brutal, especially that last level, but you're never gonna get hit back to the start of the game if you game over beyond the training area. Still, that last level, Dark Castle, is a frustrating little gauntlet featuring every stupid challenge you've endured up to that point. How dark can this castle be anyway? Casino Night is in the background. This looks like an attraction at an amusement park. Is Tails just rolling around beating up mascots? But I gotta say, as frustrating as the last level is, it makes the showdown with Witch Cart. Yeah, that's her name. She's a witch. She's in a cart. Pretty straightforward. Good for her. It makes the showdown that much more satisfying, as you can just pick her crusty ass up and yeet her into walls. And once you beat her, you just kidnap her? <laughs> I guess? Where are you going with that old woman, Tails? All the boss fights are fairly mindless, and all of them end with Tails just, uh, adding them to his unseen collection. Never to be seen again. I mean that quite literally. Have you ever seen these characters in any other Sonic game? The bear, or the wolf, and the witch don't make a lot of sense to me. The rabbit doesn't either. Unless, of course, uh, you're dealing with her archery counterpart. Even then, that's not how you get the attention of a lady, Tails. This is very creepy. But yeah, speaking of the character designs, you might notice is that none of the bosses actually fit the Sonic aesthetic. They look like they'd fit better in, well, a Sonic cartoon, at least one in the 90s. Despite the Sonic-like elements and some of the backgrounds and enemies and, well, the main character, the bosses especially have a very westernized influence to them, almost as if they were Disney characters. And that's because this game was at one point related to a Disney property, or properties, as far as we can tell. Thanks to the folks over at Sonic Retro and Sonic News Network, for, once again, compiling a lot of interesting information, the lead programmer of the game, known online as Alice Kagamino, talked a bit about the development and, as it turns out, they actually made the game three times over. Originally, it was not connected to Sonic in any way, and it was actually in development for a mystery budget portable system that Sega was working on. So yeah, there's a whole other mystery I'm gonna have to dig into after this video. And obviously, since that system never saw the light of day, that original game didn't either. Sega instead tasked them with putting this little mystery game onto their game gear. From there, we eventually got what was Tails Sky Patrol, where they added in a bunch of Sonic elements. But on top of all this, we also now have footage of a beta build of the game. One that features Tails and what looks to be Pete. What do you think of my rabbit, Tails? I know you've been lonely since. 
You shot Cosmo. To anybody who doesn't get that reference, I'm so very sorry. <laughs> this blew my mind the first time I saw this, and I didn't know any of this existed until I did research for this video. It's not like I'm the first to discover this. Sonic fans have had this information for years, and we just don't talk about it. Was this originally a full-on Disney game? Was this potentially a Sonic and Disney crossover? It wouldn't be that surprising. Sega had a great relationship with Disney back in the Genesis days. Alice probably has the answers, but they're not giving us any details. And believe it or not, that's not where the story of this game ends. As Alice would go on to say on Twitter, that even though Sega owned the rights to the characters, they didn't own the program. So the development team would go on to make the game yet again, without any Sega involvement whatsoever. This game would be known as Boon Boon Kai Boon, and made for the Game Boy and Game Boy Color, one of those early games that could work just fine on both machines. The the game was completed and shown off by Nintendo, but for contract reasons, the game was cancelled even though it is complete. The only thing that exists from this are a handful of screenshots. While I can't completely make out the character design, my mind immediately went to Klonoa. That's what I think this looks like. But again, I only have these tiny screenshots, so maybe it's something else entirely. I don't know, but it's kinda nuts that Tails Sky Patrol is this weird middle child in a trilogy of games that were completed, but only one was ever sold on store shelves, and only in Japan. That's a lot of effort for a game that would not go down in gaming history well remembered. There was a reason they didn't even bother bringing this over to the states. It's never been highly regarded. And believe it or not, that's not the only game that shares the name of Tales Sky Patrol, as there's also this little LCD game that showed up as a McDonald's Happy Meal toy. Even more portable, even more garbage. Yes, of course, I have more than one. But you know what? All this said and done, I really don't hate this game. Yeah, the story behind the game itself is far more fascinating to me, and no, I will never hanker to play it again, but I always was curious about it growing up, and thanks to doing this video, I finally gave myself an excuse to experience it, and just going down this rabbit hole was plenty fun. Not that rabbit hole. This game was never gonna be my cup of tea, it was never gonna be a favorite of mine, but I walked away from it having a better time than I expected, and yeah, actually, I kind of wish they did more with this goofy little premise. Unlike most other Game Gear Sonic games, this does not have a Master System port, and this would have benefited so much from having just a little bit more space on a screen. I really think the reputation would have been entirely different if you just see a little bit more of what's ahead of you. And like I said, it was kind of fun using the boomerang, and I could see talented developers really building off of these ideas. This could have been a wild, frantic, fun time on a Genesis. And honestly, I think this would be a fantastic mobile game if utilized properly. Maybe have the player directly control Tails with some touch mechanics. Add in some new power-ups. Specifically for the Boomerang, it doesn't have any power-ups whatsoever in this one game. And you could have really had fun with that. But as it stands, honestly, it's just fine. And that seems to be how most people feel about it if they actually spent the time to play it past that obnoxious training area. In a duology of very overlooked spin-off games, Sky Patrol is absolutely the less popular of the two. A black sheep within... Another black sheep. That didn't quite work, but you get it. Maybe this wasn't the most exciting Sonic-related game out currently, but man, I am truly glad I gave this a shot. Even if it was as bad as I originally thought, I still would have had a great time learning about all those goofy Disney connections and other versions of this game. And hey, now we all have a little more context for the 30th anniversary Tales comic. I'm genuinely looking forward to that, as well as looking back through Archie for the references that originally went over my head. As, yeah, Ian Flynn took some goofy ideas from this game and turn them into something interesting. Sure, it's exciting that there's a new Sonic game out, but be sure you take a moment to wish this little guy a happy birthday. As much fun as I had doing this video, maybe I don't even need to play Sonic Frontiers for a while. It's okay that I wasn't considered for a review code like some of my peers. Maybe instead we move on to Tails Adventure or... Wait, hold on a second. I read the wrong email. I can play Frontiers. I could have played it this whole time instead of this stupid game? I was wondering why I needed my game gear to play a new Sonic game. Yep, never mind. Sonic Frontiers is next. Toot toot, Sky Patrollers.
Guys, that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for watching this goofy video when I know you probably want to watch a whole lot of Sonic Frontier reviews. And just an early shout out to Sega. I did get the game a couple days before launch, so I will get a little bit of a heads up to put together my thoughts for you, but I'm not going to rush that out the door. I do want to take my time to really take it in and give you some honest opinions. As I've been saying in recent videos, we will be covering Klonoa and some other stuff, but for now we are going to focus on Sonic. Sonic. I'm caught up in the hype of a new game. I'm just excited for Sonic stuff recently, and I want to share that excitement. It, hey, I almost forgot again. If you're in the Atlanta, Georgia area on November 12th, be sure you stop by Sonic and Sega Fan Jam, where me and the rest of the boys at Sunset City will be having our very first live show all together. And of course, meet a bunch of other amazing YouTubers, artists, and just great Sonic fans. It's going to be an awesome time. I'll have more information in the description down down below. And hey, if you had fun here and you want to help support the channel even further, you can of course share, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And if you have a little extra to spare, I do have a Patreon where I do try to get stuff out as early as I can. Discord access, a few other fun things here and there. Thank you to the patrons already here, already supporting me. It means a whole lot. Thank you so much. And an extra special thank you to these fine folks right here. Kyle Winter, Cirrus the Skeptic, Joseph Duncan Sonic 2 Blue, John, Josh Strider, The Amazong Macy, Xanderoni the Painter, Hatsworth, Ginger Bob, Jack of All Spades, Tristan Trap, Meekers, Dun Dun, Quote, Resident Fanboy, Miles the Prower, Jeremy Singer, Mr. Bougie, World's Greatest Bard, Rain, Sam Webster, Dwight Graham, Fish Flop, Lucas Lipker, The Bad Pal, Jonathan Dobbs, Shodan, Mr. SP, Cecil the Gallade, The Dark Neon, Stefan Plakonica, Three Monic, Ty Cyan, Graham J. Hall, Lenny X, Wayne is boss Lederick fight the pain away my 20 covers are in ruins Ryan Rolfs the lumberjack and, uh, wiki wiki give me that funky beat yo my name is Mick Nick and on the web I'm the gist TM but you can call me Icky Nicky because my rhymes are sick and you know what Otis they are you're damn right they are NBTV mute trash baphomet autumn from twitter.com yes Ioni's the boss okay Mui Saxi Jin Seotome Nezend Interject 5 Grayson Conagher Spades the Nocturne Ken K Ven 101 Paxton Bisbee Sindarin 7 Stevie Cole Where's Arnold 3 Rule 4 Twilord Asira warns of a deadly fate Paisley Eric Delgado Cody Gracious, Kodinsky, Jamo Art, PK Durbar, Crimson Rose, Give Up Your Children, Separate, Sonic PAJ, Zygarde Lagan, and if any haters say I'm not funny on YouTube, let them know I got sponsored saying toot toot, wiggity wiggity, word up, Mr. Bougie. <sighs> Roxas the Cat, Godzilla, Infamous.png, Makuta of Salt, Gleam the Anomaly, Jonathan, and Alexander Watson. Well, holy cow, that's a lot of new people on the readout list. I feel like that's taking up 10 minutes of the videos nowadays, but man, what a great problem to have. Thank you guys so much. Just feeling incredibly thankful today. I'm in a great mood. Everybody rules. I'll catch you all later. Toot toot, Sonic Warriors.